Hey guys, it's uh, Sunday. So I think I started today about uh, eight o'clock. I left uh, Clearwater, got out here to Largo and uh, started going on. So the first thing I did this morning was kind of mock out what we thought was going to be the refrigerator. Um, Dale came by and uh, she had the same concerns as I did. So you guys can see uh, what we're gonna do is where the beam is right there, we're gonna back it all the way up against it. And then the countertop will actually end um, right about here. And then that that will fit in. Because what we have is we have that vent. So you can see where those two boxes are at. I'm gonna move the vent about there and get rid of that hole. And then um, we we can do it that way. I, I, I That's about where I need to move the vent and then the vent will actually be against the wall wall there'll be a wall here eventually a uh, halfway wall with counter type height with a uh, return air on the wall so i've got got that because well initially we thought we we're going to actually have it face out the doors face towards the outside that window there and that didn't work so it was just way too crowded so what you're going to have is when you walk in from the door, um, so this is you come into a door, imagine that the refrigerator is going to be about two feet further back. And then, um, and there's going to be like a half wall or so on the right hand side of that and a wall behind it. Um, just the, the width of the refrigerator. We're not going to have any, uh, we're not going to have any cabinets above the refrigerator. There's no sense for that. Another thing I think we're going to do is talking to Gail. We're gonna have a corner cabinet there, but we can't have it here, um, mainly because the the uh, dishwasher. So I started today, I thought, okay, I, I need to move the refrigerator, I need to disconnect the line, I need to turn off the valve there. Um, well, the valve didn't really turn off all that great, so I had to put a cap on it, and I, I got the bucket behind underneath that just in case something happens. I'll be turning off the water tonight anyways. Um, not a big deal, but um, there wasn't a shutoff file, believe it or not, to the refrigerator. So we'll get all that corrected, no big deal. Um, I'll be replumbing all that anyways, it, it's just crap. So um, this is what we got t today. Um, so I started, so it took literally all day today to pull nails, to get nails, not nails actually, but staples. So um, this is really why it's important, especially when you're dealing with tar. Um, here, you know, if I if, if I not rinsed off um, this, you would be seeing yellow come through that uh, sheet, through that um, mud. So that's, that's why it was so important for me to spend hours um, doing doing the walls the way I did. And so um, what I did was I pulled all the staples out or I hammered them in, but I have to be careful with that because then you get hammer, hammer heads and nails, heads, and, and the sheet rock, and you have to be careful with that. Um, I haven't done the corners yet, but I did do all the, the verticals. Typically with sheet rock, you're gonna have horizontals, not verticals, and you, you'll have some verticals, but not this many verticals. Um, so, and, Another thing I, I caught, and you can't see the screw heads, is right here where the plate is, um, that, that sheetrock had basically gaps. So I believe that also facilitated. So you had hot air or cold air coming through the sheetrock, obviously through the insulation, and then, then coming up through that ledge. So that's all been taken care of on, on all the windows in here and also in the master bedroom. So that was another thing. Um, I got all the countersink screws, all the holes, and basically I got any metal out of walls. Then what I did is after I got the staples in and got all the holes uh, or all the metals uh, taken out of the walls, then I went and sanded this. I sanded the entire wall. Um, and it's a really kind of neat sander. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I w went to Home Depot and I bought it today, and it's kind of really interesting. So it kind of it's called a floating anvil. So what it does is you just come here and you just do this. It's really 
works great. Um, and the reason I did it before I start floating was I had, I, I am really concerned about this, the transition here. Um, you can see where I'm, I, I knew there was definitely, um, I, I, I really got to make sure this transition's right because if I don't make sure the transition's right and then I got to paint, then I paint, then I got to deal with paint and transition. So I'd rather try my best to get this really as best as I possibly can. It's going to be kind of hard because, you know, I, obviously I can do it by feel. I rub my hand around it, make sure it feels correct and not make sure I don't feel that lip there. But, you know, I'd rather not deal with that if I don't have to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put the kilts down here. I'm going to probably put two layers of kilts on this one and then bring it up. I'm going to flush it through. I'll probably be flushing it through about here. So I'll, but I really want to make sure that I get this, this line out. I had one vertical line and I've dealt with this before and it is a problem. I've dealt with it like, if you don't get this right, then you're really wishing that you, you spent the time. So painting is no big deal. Um, it, it's, it's prepping these walls that take the longest. And I'm not, I, by any stretch of imagination, do I do drywall. I'm kind of glad I didn't have to do the drywall in here. Um, but this is, you know, we'll, we'll see how good I am here. It is, this does take a while. Um, I was really kind of hoping I'd be done to, by the day on this. So it doesn't look like I'm done. So I spent quite a bit of time. I, I probably took an hour and a half for lunch and, and probably about another hour in, in here talking with Gene Mom um, about some approaches that we could possibly take with, within the kitchen. But, you know, <laughs> so it kind of gives you an idea. I, you know, obviously I haven't done this yet. And I did do some of the master bedroom. And here's an interesting thing um, that I found. I thought that corner here, I, I thought oh my, I was gonna have to rip this out. But what I found was they never did, um, they never did nail this in. So you can see that big old gap right there. And that's actually where the sheetrock was. It was beveled out and I thought, we have a bent wood, what, you know, that I pressed on it. It was like wiggly all over the place. It's like, oh, I wonder if it got detached. And to realize it was never stapled in. But what they did was they just ran that strip in and nobody had spent the time to fix it. So that is fixed now. And I started, I started working in this room a little bit today. Um, but I haven't really spent a lot of time in this room other than, you know, fixing the wedges. So you can kind of see what I did is I just put dry, dry rock, dry sheet rock net screws in because again, this gap right here was huge. And then that hot air or cold air would come up. And, you know, obviously you can see here, there's no silicone, so it would just sweat. And, and that, that probably also contributed to it. So that's fixed now. So um, I'll get these big old gaps, I guess, some foam, but, I, I, that foam stuff, you gotta use it or, and lose it. Um, so once I'm ready to use it, um, because I know if I stop, that sometimes those things get clogged. They, they make a chemical to actually clean it out, but I couldn't find it at this Home Depot. Nothing in here. I didn't really, I didn't go in there at all today. Um, let's see what else there was. Uh, that, I think that's about it. Um, oh, Randy, <laughs> the ceiling fan works, bud. And uh, I, all I did was uh, fix a, the loose wire. It was just a loose wire. But we're gonna rip this down anyway, so you're, you got lots of work. Because as you can see, when I move the refrigerator, that's what we're gonna, we're gonna have to actually move the um, electrical all the way back to here. So we're gonna have to deal with that. You know, I'm sure you can come up with a way we can probably deal with that. But, you know, we still got electrical. One of the switches I found, um, this, you know, one's out the outside here, and the, this one is actually to that socket there. So, um, so I don't have some of the electrical problems I thought I had, uh, but I, I still definitely need to get all the switches, all the plugs. I'm sure you'll find other stuff that'll need to be done. We're definitely gonna be re-putting the LEDs that you kind of found as well throughout the house. Um, I don't know. I have a lot
like to put them in here, but I don't know if we should put them in here. Um, maybe you can give me some insights to maybe a process to do that. Um, the kitchen, I'd like to do the same if we could, but again, we may not be able to. I, I need to do a little research on this ceiling and see if we can actually replace it if we have to get up in there to do it. I think it, lighting is pretty important. It really can really make a big difference along with all the, the stuff that Gail and Shannon are thinking about doing cabinet wise. I mean, so, um, and uh, just the, and we, G-Mom found some trailer uh, mobile homes that uh, in Bradenton, 